It is that time again where I'm gonna be answering your questions. What is up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. So if you're into improving your mental and emotional well-being, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And today, I'm going to be answering Patreon questions. So for those of you who don't know, I have a Patreon, and anybody who is signed up on the Patreon, you can do it for as little as a dollar a month, you get your name in the credits, and you get to ask me questions. I get so, so, so many questions and video topics from all of you in the comments, and a lot of them I've done, some of them I pick, but I do want to make videos for the people who are, you know, supporting the channel and they get something in return. So if you want more of a guaranteed way to have your specific questions answered, make sure you go sign up for uh, over on Patreon. And then at the $5 tier, I have exclusive videos up for anybody $5 and up. Also, also real quick, follow me on Instagram. You know why? Because look at these two beautiful cats. All right, so yesterday, Tristan and I were like, okay, let's put these costumes on cats. So this is Wyatt, rocking a beautiful dinosaur costume. And then here's Maya, in an adorable little Christmas sweater. So follow me over on Instagram, because I'm gonna do something hilarious with Wyatt in a video today. So follow me on Instagram, at The Rewired Soul. And I have the beautiful, amazing, camera shy Tristan right next to me to ask me the Patreon questions. So let's get started. Okay, the first one is from Sherry. Hey, Sherry. <laughs> it says, I'd love to see a video on chronic pain and people who use pain meds to control them. Aha, so Sherry. Sherry is an OG, like, rewired soldier. Like, she's been around since, like, way back. I think, like, before I even had 500 subscribers. So, also, Sherry, uh, I heard you're coming out to Vegas. Let's do lunch or something. You, me, Tristan, whoever else. Let's do it. Anyways, so, yeah, so chronic pain patients who have to take pain meds. So, those of you who don't know me, I'm a recovering drug addict. My drug of choice was prescription pain meds. I am somebody who di didn't have chronic pain. Something that I always empathize with, like working in the addiction treatment field, is like people who suffer from chronic pain and they got hooked on the pain meds. Like, that's really, really rough. But here's the thing. So, just a real quick story of mine is, in my active addiction, I would do anything, anything to get high, right? So like, I would take pills, like I would, I would like snort an oxy just for a headache, all sorts of things. So I would go to any lengths to get high. So in my recovery, I go to any lengths to stay clean. So in my sobriety, I'm very fortunate. I haven't like broken any bones, uh, any bones, but I've been in a, in a head-on collision uh, car accident. I've been to the emergency room multiple times because I get tendonitis in my shoulders. I get excruciating pain. I even had Tristan come with me to the hospital. Like, so something I do is have people go with me to the hospital so I don't take those pain meds. Like my last relapse started off with one Vicodin pill, okay? Now, um, the question that Sherry asked though, is here's the thing. Like, here, especially in the United States, we're very quick to give people medications when there's so many other options. So, so, so many other options. Like, if you are somebody, especially if you're struggling with addiction or if you're afraid you might get addicted, go through every other route first. Like, for example, there's a great book called Full Catastrophe Living by John Kabat-Zinn. They call him like the father of Western mindfulness. He brought mindfulness over here. And one of his first like tests with mindfulness was bringing it into a pain management clinic. So they, with the, with the way that the mind and the body interact, a lot of people were overcoming their pain just based on mindfulness practices. So what I would recommend is look through holistic routes. Like the problem is, is that usually even when I say this to people like anybody, not anybody, but a lot of people in like Western culture, the second I even mentioned that meditation might help with pain, they think I'm an idiot. But if you said that like almost anywhere else in the world, they'd be like, yeah, that sounds about right. You know, so just research holistic options. Um, I would also say, see if your insurance covers like a pain management specialist who specializes in like uh, either addiction as well as like holistic treatments. The next one is from Richard. It said, something that's been on my mind a lot lately are the effects of workplace stress. I work as a case manager in a drug treatment court and the stress from the volume of clients and the lack of support from the state wears on both in, wears on my both in and out of office. Yes. So Richard, Richard's also somebody who's been around forever. And, and yeah, so like, first off, it's awesome that you're working in the field. And, and here's the thing, like when I first started working in addiction treatment, I needed so much support. Like, um, 
coming from a 12-step program and everything, like I was calling my sponsor every day, I was calling, you know, other people um, in my recovery support group. Um, my friend Jeremiah, who passed away recently, he's somebody that I used to call because the stress is there. Like, there's a lot of stress in different fields, whether it's um, social work or being a nurse or, you know, me, I was just a, you know, a facilitator and I would help people after they left treatment. There's a lot of stress that comes along with that, right? But then, like something that Richard's talking about is, then you have like the workplace stress. Like, you might work at like, you know, this is not to knock any other position, but I'm just saying, like, you might be working at, like, a department store or, you know, a fast food joint. Like, every job has their stresses. But when you compound the fact that, you know, you're dealing with, like, life and death situations, you're dealing with people trying to get their lives back on track, it can weigh heavily on you. So something that I personally do, um, and this is for anybody, anybody who has a problem bringing work home with them, is mindfulness, right? Like, so something I have to think about is Tristan or my son. Like, it is not fair to Tristan or my son or any of you for me to bring work here with me, right? And for me to be moody or angry or depressed or sad. Like, like it's okay for me to experience these emotions, but I can't take that out on you, if that makes sense. So one thing that really helps me out in my field, and this is for Richard or anybody else who might work in a similar field, I try to focus on the successes, okay? So whether it's, you know, I'm hearing about a bunch of clients who are like relapsing or passing away, or just my boss is being whatever, like I just remember how I'm helping people. So like there were times when I would get into like, you know, an argument or, uh, you know, something like that with like a boss or a coworker or whatever, but then I had to go do a group and I would just, I would just channel my energy like it's not about me anymore, I need to help people. So my main suggestion is focus on the positive, not the ne uh, negative. Next suggestion is, Here's the thing, I worked at a place similar, Richard, and always remember that you're in control. I used to complain to Tristan all the time about a place I used to work, and like, I would just remind her, like, I would remind her to remind myself and be like, I'm in control, I can leave this place. If I'm not happy with how it's being run, I can leave this place when I want to. Yeah, I might take a pay cut, but I am in control, okay? Nobody is holding me hostage at that job, and that's for all of you out there. The last thing I will say for, um, you know, whether you're in social work, nursing, um, EMTs, first responders, whatever it is, I don't have the resources off the top of my head. If anybody finds them, like say it in the comments, but there are like support lines and things like that for people who work in this industry and you're getting like really stressed out. So um, I actually did some research, Tristan and I did some research before this video and we didn't come up with anything. So like, but I know they exist. My mom's giving them to people. Um, you know, we've come across them before, so if anybody has those, link them down in the comments and then I'll uh, update the description. Okay, so this one's from Domina. Um, it's similar to Richard's, but in a different setting. Okay. Okay, so could you give me some strategies to support people who are caring for someone with a mental health issue? For example, what to do if you're worried to leave your partner by themselves, how to deal with self-injury with someone you love, how to take care of your mental health when you are taking care of your partner? That's an in-depth question. I can make a whole video on that. Um, I have some videos on this. It's tough. It, it's tough. I made a video a while back about Shane Dawson being a fixer. So one of the things that we have to look at first is codependency, right? We have to see like, you know, are we reliant on trying to fix these people and you know, is it something that's unhealthy? But I definitely understand. So. A great example is like my mom, right? My mom watched me killing myself with my drug addiction and it came to a point where like, she couldn't help me unless I was willing to help myself and she was about to let me be homeless on the street. Like she was at a point where she knew it was possible that I was gonna die, you know, but she gave me an ultimatum to get help. But my mom knew that she couldn't fix me, right? So that's my suggestion to you, um, is to realize that you do not have the power to fix anybody. I don't have the power to fix anybody. No matter how big this YouTube channel gets, I never, ever have the power to fix anybody. And that is kind of similar to like Richard's question. Like that's something that help keep me, keeps my sanity in the mental health field. Like it's a balance between doing the best I can every single day while also realizing that I can't fix anybody, all right? So I do have a book, and shameless plug, but it's like $3. <laughs> it's called Caught in the Crossfire, and it, it's, uh, it answers a lot of your questions about how to maintain your uh, mental health when somebody else is struggling with addiction or 
You can also use it for mental health. I, I put intervention strategies in there. I put uh, motivational uh, interviewing, which is something that all of you need to learn. Like after this video, go Google motivational interviewing questions. Like it will help you a lot. I need to do an entire video on this. But when it comes to like, um, she mentioned self-harm, right? Yeah. So self-harming, that's something I don't have enough videos on. Like self-harm does not always mean a person is suicidal, but it is very dangerous and it is possible to hurt yourself really bad. And in cases like that, you have to set boundaries with the person and be like, listen, like this isn't okay. We're going to call like here in the States, we have 5150, right? Mm -hmm. So like you call, people get put on a 72 hour hold and all of that. So like. Uh, my mom and I did a video a while back about like helping suicidal clients and like I highly recommend a lot of you watch that like at the end of the day like whether this person gets mad or angry or whatever like we have to call people who are more skilled and qualified than we are okay okay I want to lighten it up let's lighten it up <laughs> well lighten it up for me I guess that's <laughs> for everyone Aaron's question is you have mentioned a fascination with cults and serial killers which one of uh, which one of each do you find the most interesting? That is interesting. That is interesting. And that's one of the reasons why Tristan and I made a beautiful uh, couple. Because we're both interested in that stuff. Like cults and serial killers. It's something that I've been fascinated with just since I was a kid. It's the same reason why I'm fascinated with mental health. Like I'm always just trying to understand why people think the way they think, right? Like why do people do? Why do we do? Like that's why I love like behavioral therapy and like behavioral sciences. Like what drives us to do these things, right? So when you see somebody like a serial killer, I remember one of my favorite movies. I don't know if any of you saw this. If any of you saw this, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know if you saw it, Tristan. There was a movie with Sigourney Weaver back in the 90s called Copycat. Did you see it? And she was like an author or something, right? And then I think it was Louis Gossip, no, not Louis Gossip Jr. Oh, it was the other guy. The, um, the, the country singer's son, and he's like in movies and stuff. Henry Connick Jr. He was like a serial killer and he was copying like people like Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, I remember watching that when I was a kid and it was just like fascinating to me. And it's really creepy. Like, I would always ask myself, I'm like, man, is this like creepy of me to be fascinated? Do you ever wonder that? No. Okay. I, I'm creepy. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm like, am I like, in a weird way, like fascinated with serial killers? Like, is it weird? But no, it's just because I, I, I really get intrigued by the way people think and like why why is that you know but then you get the cult aspect i talked a lot about this in my video the other day about the film theorists and confirmation bias like when i see how we blindly follow people and how we have this like like it makes sense why cults work like it makes sense even on youtube i will never forget whenever cults come to mind i think of logan paul like this is terrible but Low gangers, you're a cult. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, calm down. But I'll never forget, when Logan Paul did his stuff in the suicide forest, right? And then he came out with his apology video. He told the low gang, don't defend me. I, like, I screwed up, do not defend me. And the low gang was on the internet, in his comments and on Twitter, and they're like, they're basically like, screw you, Logan, low gang for life, we're gonna defend you anyways. Like, that is insanity. Like, think about that. Like, I never want to get to a place where I have that much power or control. Like, that is madness. But, yeah, cults are very interesting because they take a lot of advantage of people who are in vulnerable situations, people looking for a way out, you know, and all sorts of stuff. Now, here's the thing. I mentioned this in another video. But one of my favorite TV shows that blended these two things together, serial killers and cults, was the following. The following was my jam because it was a cult of serial killers. What? All right, this is from Dollface. She asks, could you touch on how best to actually seek help slash treatment? That she's been waiting for an appointment for months for a psychiatric nurse and practitioner. So she wants to know. Yeah. So that's a great question. And yeah, I could do an entire video on this, but I'll touch on a few points here. So the first one is, the first one is find support groups, okay? like. One of the best things that any of you can do with your mental with your mental health issues is find somebody who's been through it before. Like that is just the number one thing that you have to do. Find somebody who's been through trauma. Find somebody who's overcome addiction. Find somebody who's survived like suicidal thoughts. Find somebody who's in recovery from uh, self harm. Find people who have overcome the thing that you're struggling with and talk to them. All right, like. 
one of the reasons people connect with me is because I've been through a lot of stuff. Like that's one of the reasons some of you like connect with Tristan. Tristan has been through stuff. Like that is some of the best therapy you will ever get. But then there's also like medication. So you do need to seek psychiatric help. Now, as far as waiting lists, I don't know where Dollface is from. In the United States, okay, I'm gonna link this website down in the description below, and this is for um, a plethora of stuff, okay? It's called SAMHSA, forgot what it's, <laughs> it's like Substance Abuse Mental Health Something Association. But anyways, that is a United States website, it's uh, government funded, and it is basically addiction and mental health treatment locator. But this is why you all need to know about this website, because even if you don't have insurance, Okay, it will help you find treatment. It will help you find um, addiction treatment, mental health treatment. They even have state-funded like uh, detox centers. Like, so this website is amazing. So you go in there, you type out your zip code. Like they even have like um, mental health facilities or therapists or people who can prescribe like mental health medications just all through that website. So you gotta check that out. But as far as like waiting lists, is that like, that's just one of the things about, I don't know, healthcare in general. So like take the baby steps, but also realize, realize too, like if you're having, having like severe anxiety or depression, see a doctor, try not to get like Xanax or Valium or like hard narcotics. Um, but also remember like, like my antidepressants, I'm on Prozac, it's prescribed by my regular doctor. And always, I just wanted to add, if it's like a severe, like you're suicidal right this minute, you can look up a psychiatric hospital in your area and go to that hospital, knock on their door, and tell them I'm suicidal and they have to take you. Oh yeah. You'll be put on a hold for a 72 hour hold and you might be put on another hold after that depending on how bad it is. But if it's that bad, you should go and seek help. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and Tristan knows because she used to work at a psych hospital. Hmm, what you think about that? But yeah, absolutely, if it's anything severe, if it's anything severe, do not wait. And I can do a whole nother video on this too, where people are like, well, I don't wanna be a bother. Like, go be a bother. Yeah. Like, go knock on their door, but yeah, they have to help you. That's another tip. I made a video a long time ago about three ways to get treatment without um, insurance. One of them is that SAMHSA website. But also, like, if you're, if you're trying to quit drugs, like, and you're worried about detox and withdrawal, go to an emergency room. They have to take you. Like, they're not gonna turn you away. Like, go in there and say, I need to get stable. Boom, get started, all right? But anyways, Thank you for all those amazing, amazing questions. Let's all give a round of applause for Tristan for asking the questions. Yay, Tristan, woo! But anyways, again, if you want me to ask your questions, answer your questions, not ask your questions, if you want me to answer your questions, go ahead, sign up on Patreon. It'll be down in the description and in the pinned comment. And what it does is it helps me do something I love. I get to spend a little bit more personal time with you. And like I said, at the $5 tier um, and up, I just started putting exclusive content up there. Very, very soon, I have some other exciting announcements for Patreon. One of them is at the $20 tier. I I give everybody who's at the $20 tier and up, all you, you get all my books now and in the future for free. Pretty sweet deal. So that's how we roll. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And by the way, follow me on Instagram so you can see amazing cat pictures and videos. All right. <laughs> but thanks again to everybody signed up on Patreon and I'll see you next time.